What's up everybody? Welcome to Gaming Tech. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. These are the fans that I chose for the Acer Nitro system. Unfortunately, the biggest drawback with this computer is that it doesn't have enough fan headers on the motherboard and it doesn't support these fans. We're gonna open the case now. We have shown this previously. It's pretty straightforward process, very simple to do. Some of my subscribers were asking me, can we improve the airflow on this case? It's not needed, because I done the testing for it. Number one problem is this hard drive cage. It holds with two screws, but in order to remove, that is just not enough. Because this hard drive cage is bolted to the computer case. Here I was trying with 80mm Noctua fan. If you really want to have a fan there, it has to be a slim profile fan. These are made out of plastic. I will be showing the bolted area of the case as well. I took out the screws, but the bolts, as you see here, are still holding this bracket. Plus, they done the cable routing on it. For a regular user, this is a lot of work. It's not worth doing it. It's not gonna give you even lower temperatures. The temperature out of this system is already great. Since I wanted to see how many fan headers this motherboard has, I decided to remove the graphic card and I was surprised by another action. Basically this uh, graphic card has a GPU support bracket that is installed with three screws on the side, three or four something like that and two screws that are holding directly to the motherboard. You need to use a special screwdriver in order to reach those and it's once again, a difficult process for a regular person to do. It's not worth it, it doesn't serve any purpose, it's just a waste of time. For your question, shall I add extra fans to this system? Absolutely not. If you really want to improve your temperatures, you can get a new CPU cooler. Here I decided to put everything back. I decided also to benchmark the system with one fat added. Obviously, it's not doing the optimal job here since we couldn't remove the hard drive cage. 12 millimeter doesn't fit. 80 millimeter slim profile fan, it has to be in order to insert between the hard drive cage and the case itself. Since the Noctua cable was not long enough, you have to use extensions here and this goes all the way into the corner of the motherboard. That's the only available fan header. Also make sure to subscribe to the channel. I see a lot of you are watching the videos but not still are subscribed. Like, share, do all of those stuff. Here I'm testing the system once again. And here adding more extra air of course to the case. This works, but it's nothing practical, it's just stupid, but you guys love it. As you see, that's the CPU temperature. I saw one degree of difference, it's not worth doing it. I will be showing the stock score of the 3D Mark and the overclock score. Afterwards, we're gonna do benchmarks of Assassin Creed Valhalla in-game benchmark and then with those settings that we gather from our results we're gonna apply to the game and see if we can run this card on 2085 megahertz some of you gonna ask me can't you do 2100 it's impossible tried my best the card can't do it we see our temperatures here you guys love these graphs and this is our overclock score 
it's pretty okay. The fans they picked for this case is already great, so you don't need to improve them or replace them. That's my idea. And if you find the system for $1,000, you should definitely get it. We're running everything on stock here. You see the GP temperature. You see the utilization of the card, boost clock, watt usage, and fan speed. Fan speed is always kept on 100. We're running on ultra high. We're starting the in-game benchmark here. This is gonna be our base one. Window mode, I kept it on borderless, that's a mistake of me, it should have been on full screen, but I don't think it matters that much here. Power management of the card is on performance mode, and we are using maximum power. It's a great card, considering it's a blower style of card, I don't know who is the producer of this card, but it overclocks very well. I checked tech power-ups results to have a roughly idea of what 3060 Ti's can do. Obviously Asus is topping again, Zotac was the last one, 2085 MHz I can say next best to Acer, next best to Asus I mean, which is pretty acceptable. And these are our score average is 57, minimum is 29, and maximum is 99. We're running everything on graphic quality of ultra high settings. Fan speed on the system is 100%, on the exhaust fan 100%, on the CPU cooler also 100%. So it does get pretty loud, but you guys wanted to see maximum performance of the system here this is the second try we only increase the core clock here nothing else and also at the end of the video i'm gonna put them all side by side so you can see your numbers yourself and make your own judgment if this system is worth the money but for a thousand dollar I fully recommend the system if you find it. You got a hardware that can handle next AAA game titles even. Not a problem. I'm not sure if Assassin's Creed Valhalla received any performance updates, but these are the numbers. Because it was saying when I googled around 47 fps on ultra high which i do find low but we are way above that number you will see in the game test as well also when you go into the windows uh, power management mode there's different options there's acer recommended one i'm not sure exactly what it does i chose the High performance mode. This is our second results. And we're gonna push the system to its maximum capabilities just in a second. We're running the latest drivers. There we go. 2085 megahertz obviously you're gonna tell me this doesn't mean anything in synthetic benchmark which is true this is all about pushing numbers here but we took it one step further and we applied these settings in the game and we had zero issues zero crashes so based on your luck of they call it the silicon lottery 
you can even run maybe higher or lower but this is what we can do with this system it's an amazing machine this kind of videos and tests obviously do take longer time to make because you gotta gather a lot of data so have patience guys beautiful game I haven't played this game personally myself only launched it for testing purposes so someday I gotta finish the game and obviously you cannot do a game test properly when you don't know the game this is just a general idea to give you what the in-game benchmark can do as well we're testing in the game so certain zones might be with a lot of FPS dip and uh, so on and we are in the game we're running everything on ultra high beautiful game 1080p resolution I put it on the side as well 10400F this system has an updated model but you don't need to pay $200 extra for an updated CPU that's gonna boost 100 megahertz higher it's not worth it zero issues people who know this game more can tell me what zones are low on FPS that would make my job much more easier and we can do further testing if that's what people want to see I'm doing this route, I'm going around this place first with everything maxed out and then I'm gonna drop everything to his stock settings so you can see the difference we're capturing the video with Elgato HD60S in order not to lose any performance here I'm gonna put everything to his stock settings just gonna increase the fan speed to 100% because that's what we had from the start initially and you see the difference already but considering if you want to run overclocked or not you get a solid experience 60 62 64 obviously where fights and other stuff happens this FPS would drop but you have the option to squeeze more performance out of the system if that's what you want I'm gonna let you guys enjoy the rest of the footage so I won't be speaking thank you for watching this video if you have any questions or requests you can always comment below I'll see you on the next video make sure to watch the ending also if you want to see comparison of all of the benchmarks let's go guys